welcome to the 14 day Alps snow forecast. Some good news to begin with. Since my last update, things have improved significantly in parts of the Alps at least because there have been heavy snowfalls in the west and the north. Now, is there more snow on the way as we head through the next two weeks? Well, before trying to answer the question, just a few important notes. Firstly, this forecast is going to be focusing on the trends and probabilities rather than the details. Remember that big variations can occur in mountain weather over short distances. Therefore, always check your in-resort forecast for the latest and most up-to-date information. Finally, let me point out as well that in these forecasts I'm going to try and present the unvarnished truth because in my experience I often turn up in the Alps and find conditions bear little resemblance to the ones I've read about before setting off and the weather conditions are completely different to what some of the forecasts have been hinting at, often less snow than they suggest. Now, with that out of the way, let's see how things may be shaping up. This is the picture at 00 GMT, Tuesday the 13th of January. It's dry across the Alps and the Pyrenees. There is a little disturbance there just to the north, but it's not having an impact. As I run the sequence, it stays dry in the short term. But as we approach the weekend, there are signs of it turning more changeable. The chance of precipitation begins to increase. This is the picture at nine o'clock on Friday, the 16th of January. You can see there is some precipitation over the Alps. The pink shading indicates snow. The blue shading there at lower levels is indicating rain. Running this forwards, and you'll see there is more snow over the Alps through the weekend it's quite patchy in nature and then early next week dry conditions return high pressure is built into the northeast which is quite interesting because it leads to the possibility of a low pressure spinning up over the mediterranean in turn that could have a significant impact were it to happen on the likely snow distribution through week two which I'll look at a little bit later. But I think the message here is that there is a good chance of some snow falling from Friday onwards, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Amounts, well, let's see. This is the snow depth animation, the uh, Pyrenees here, the Alps here, there is snow to start off with, of course, so it's showing existing accumulations, not just new ones. Running this, the dry conditions mean the totals are not changing through the first few days. But through Friday, Saturday and Sunday, the numbers do start to increase, the shading expands. It means there is some snow falling, at least in the west and the north. It may well be staying dry in the south. What about freezing levels? Day by day is what this animation will show when I run, run it, so the maximum freezing levels and it's very mild to start off with up to about 3,000 meters in places but the message is that it should be turning colder as we head through the week particularly the second half of it with those freezing levels dip into around 1400 meters so the trend is towards colder conditions later in the week as that mild air which is over the Alps initially and the Pyrenees gets shunted away. It's always worth taking a look at what various different computer models are showing rather than just relying on one. So this is the view from the GFS, the Global Forecast System, on Monday the 19th of January. It also has the high pressure there to the east, the northeast, and some indications of changeable weather maybe developing over the Alps. It's a similar picture from the UK Met Office Global. There could be some precipitation there over the Alps, particularly in the west and the north at this point. But once more, it's a case of keeping an eye on this area of high pressure. And finally, the European model, which the sequences were based on. High pressure also to the east. And it's a drier picture across the Alps, as I've already noticed by, noted by the end of the first week. So there's reasonably good agreement there between those three different models about the bigger picture across Europe at this point. But the details, of course, are varying. So I think... It looks like there could well be some snow in the west and north of the Alps through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It may extend further eastwards and maybe a little bit southwards too, but you'd think the north and the west were most likely to see significant accumulations, perhaps between 5 and 20 centimetres, 5 and 25 centimetres 
but certainly I wouldn't expect those accumulations to be as big as the ones which those parts of the Alps saw in recent days. So how do things develop as we go through the second week? For this part, I split the Alps into the three areas, the west, the east, and the south. So starting with the Western Alps, what I'm showing here is a chart from the GEFS model. It's an ensemble model. So an ensemble model is one which contains many runs. Each has its starting conditions tweaked slightly to help account for uncertainty about the current state of the atmosphere. What this suggests is that it may be turning colder later. It's not particularly cold to start off with, not particularly mild though. There is some precipitation around, so snow is possible. The snow row values along the bottom indicate how many runs in the ensemble are showing snow to fall on the given day. The maximum value is 33, so it's a moderate risk of snow at any one point, maybe increasing there at the very end with numbers climbing up to 22, but it doesn't look like a particularly snowy picture through the second week in this part of the Alps, according to the GEFS. The European Ensemble shows 850 HPA temperatures here. It's relatively mild to begin with, maybe turning somewhat colder later on. But when I say relatively mild, it's important to remember that a lot of the resorts in the Western Alps and French Alps are high up. So this isn't really a problem. It's just when you're going down to perhaps 1300 meters or lower that this would start to be a concern in this region. In terms of precipitation, from the European model, there are quite a few spikes there early on, so a chance of snow, moderate probably, it's not as high a chance as it was last week, but there could well be some snow around. And some of the numbers there, which show rain, are indicating that there could, as I've hinted, be rain falling at lower levels. Probably, Often the cutoff seems to be around 1500 meters when you've got this type of pattern. So above that, you're likely to be seeing snow. Below it, the chance of rain increases significantly. The Eastern Alps, a relatively mild picture. So it's the same story. There are fewer spikes along the bottom. The snow row values are lower. In other words, the chance of precipitation, the chance of snow, in this part of the Alps is lower than it is in the West, according to the GEFS model. The European model indicates relatively mild conditions as well. If anything, the anomaly here is bigger than it was in the West, although it's dipping towards the end of the second week. Precipitation, there's a low to moderate risk, so I'd say it's, it's likely to be drier here than in the West. And if there is any precipitation falling, there's a greater chance of it falling of, as rain than was in the west as well so it's not so good in this part of the alps if this data is correct down to the southern alps now and this is interesting and it fits in with the picture i was describing those deterministic models which had high pressure building to the east to the northeast low pressure forming over mediterranean hence heavy snow is possible that's what this is signaling in the southern alps so and particularly you would think in, in the Italian Alps, there could be some big falls of snow for the first few days of the second week with that area of low pressure starting to come into play. The snow row values are very high. Towards the end of the second week, turning drier. And the temperatures are dipping as well through the second week. The positive anomaly here is smaller to start off with. And by the end there, it may be rather a chilly picture, relative of course to the averages at the various levels. But the key point here, a significant chance of heavy snow. May well, it may well be the best part of the Alps if you are hoping for heavy snow. The European uh, model shows that relatively mild picture. There is a bigger anomaly here than there was in the GEFS data. Also, there are fewer runs dipping towards the ember. There are some in the mix there, but most are indicating relatively mild air aloft. The precipitation risk according to the European Ensemble, wet snow or snow early on, the European Ensemble breaks the precipitation type into various categories, so it's not just snow or rain. We've got 
snow, we've got wet snow, sleet and ice pellets. So it's more detailed in that sense of the GEFS data. And the message is that there is a significant chance of snow or wet snow. Once more, it's going to be better if you go higher up. Always the case. The pressure anomalies for days 10 to 15, the Alps and the Pyrenees here, and this is this is based on data from the GEFS model. It's suggesting a negative pressure anomaly and a positive one there to the northeast. So taken at face value, it would indicate the chance of snow, which fits in reasonably well with what I've been discussing. And the biggest negative uh, pressure anomaly is to the south. Once more, just maybe reinforcing that message that low pressure over the Mediterranean could be nudging up in towards the Alps. Uh, through the second week, bringing that chance of heavy snow into uh, southern areas. So to summarise, week one, a lot of dry weather to start off with. The chance of snow increases from Friday, it continues through to Tuesday, perhaps 5 to 20 centimetres falling. The northern and western Alps are favoured. Week two, heavy snow this time is most likely in the Southern Alps as low pressure begins to push up from the Mediterranean. At low levels, there is that risk of rain elsewhere, drier, especially in the east. So there we have it, quite a mixed picture in the Alps as we head through the next two weeks. Through week one, the risk of snow is greatest in the west and in the north. Through week two, it transfers to the south. And there is that possibility, it's impossible to say with any degree of confidence, but there is that possibility of heavy falls of snow, particularly in the Italian Alps through the first few days of the second week. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this forecast and found it useful. If you have done, then please consider hitting the like button below and of course subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already because in that way you'll not be missing any of my future updates whether they relate to the Alps or to the UK's weather. Also stay up to date with the day-to-day -day details and the latest charts by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.